I'm Tal Rusfoli, the director of the uh, new Truth video for Alexander Ebert. And this is Mark Rathal. He's my writing partner. We've collaborated together on many projects. Mark is a, uh, a screenwriter and a professor of philosophy and very interested in the interpreting lyrics of songs philosophically. I look for uh, musicians where you start reading and thinking about it and you realize that there are layers and layers of depth and, and he's one of them. So I, I heard the songs, I liked them, and then I started paying attention and suddenly discovered that there are really interesting things going on. So for example, Up From Below, I remember you saying that it was from the Edward Sharp album, you were saying it was a very existentialist song. It, Why it is that? Extremely existentialist. Well, it's uh, oriented towards death, running, running forward into death and, and facing the, the, the end of existence. And the whole song is, is shaped by an experience as a child where his father tells him that he's going to die. And the song relates how this affects his experience of the world. Which is very, very existentialist. The existentialist tradition is uh, one of the key elements of it is the idea that in order to really uh, embrace life we have to understand that uh, we're going to die. So he has this great realization of saying, that for he first he tries to fight it, try to test it by, you know, really testing the limits of his own mortality through drug abuse and everything. And then he talks about coming up from below and finding out how high we can go. So then I remember I sent you, I sent you this song, I think it was Christmas of last year, and I said, my God, it's really a great song. And tell me what you, what you found when you, when you listened to the song. Um, well, I, I wrote... Uh, my dis to go way back, I wrote my dissertation on truth, and, and I've published a, a lot of philosophical essays on truth, so it's been one of my, my main philosophical interests, the whole idea of what truth is and, and how we're to make sense of it. Um, and uh, what uh, I, I was absolutely fascinated by the lyrics to the song, because Alexander's hit on uh, the very important idea, which I think a lot of philosophers don't understand. The idea is that uh, you only have truth uh, to the degree that you also have untruth. You only have light to the degree that you also have darkness. And that, that's one of the great images of this song, is that, that we have to embrace the shadows. We have to let, uh, the way he puts it in the song, is we have to let our darkness shine. Right? Without that, you don't have any truth. So I mean, if you think just on a perceptual level, our ability to see anything in the world depends on there being shadows, there being dark textures, there being dark places. If everything was light, you, you could discern absolutely nothing. And, and a, lot of, uh, a, a lot of people want absolute truth, which I think is something akin to having absolute light. With absolute truth, you, you could discern nothing. You, you always have to have things that you can't understand, things that you don't make sense, things that you can't get clear about in order to let the other things stand out in sharper contrast. He says, the truth is I never shook my shadow. Every day is trying to trick me into doing battle. And we have these images of him coming down the mountain. And what's this position that he's taking as a, as a human being? Well, uh, I took that as uh, this idea that I was just talking about, that, that truth, uh, illumination, understanding, necessarily go together with things that can't be understood, with, with falsehoods, with things that aren't clear, with things that resist our understanding. And a lot of human existence is this battle between obscurity and truth, between darkness and illumination. Um, and uh, Alexander's really interesting intuition is that uh, you both get sharper, both become more what they are as they stand in conflict. And, and that life isn't a matter of just embracing one side or the other, but to bring them into engagement with each other, bring them into battle with each other. And, and, and I remember you saying there was this kind of a Nietzschean quality to it of this idea of like this descent uh, into acknowledging that dark side from feeling above it all, right? That's what the, the, that first image of the descent down the mountain came from. What is that, what is that posture of not wanting to acknowledge the, the, the banalities, the darkness of, of life look like? And how does the song bring us into that that? transformation, do you think? Well, Nietzsche's written this lovely little piece called The Wanderer and His Shadow, and it's a dialogue between a, a man and his shadow, and, and he explores some of these ideas, that, 
that the shadow is always accompanying, accompanying us, it's always there with us, and that we don't acknowledge it, we don't acknowledge its importance. Um, the, the shadow always comes along with knowledge, right? As we get to understand things, we know things, that, that it simultaneously opens up things that we don't understand, that, that we don't get, uh, that we can't get clear about. So, so you had this idea of the wanderer and the, and the shadow and having to embrace the shadow. And I then asked you to, you know, see if we could come up with an idea to pitch to Alexander for how we would tell this story visually or create the visuals that would accompany the, uh, the song that would help kind of uh, reinforce this tale, that's this philosophical kind of journey that's going on. So can you talk a little bit about um, what, what, what images inspired you and how you went about writing the treatment the first time around? Alexander, um, and lots of people remark this, you can't look at him without thinking of Christ. Right? Right. And, and, uh, and the song also invokes a lot of Christian imagery, the, the notion of bathing in blood and, and so on, and, and redemption through, through blood. And so that was in the back of my mind. And, and I realized that there's, there isn't a Christian tradition as well, which has the same idea that, that we have to embrace life in, uh, in all its richness, that, that salvation comes through not just the spirit, but also through the body, not just the intellect, but also the blood and, and the flesh. And the, so the body, the flesh, the, the blood being the darkness and the shadow. Right. And the, the intellect and the spirit being the light. And so one way of thinking of, of Jesus Christ, and, and our culture has inherited this, whether you're overtly Christian or not, we've, we've sort of steeped in this idea. Uh, one way of interpreting Jesus Christ is teaching us you have to leave the body behind, right? And his death and his crucifixion, and he goes up to the Father and he's pure spirit. And, and for a lot of people, that, um, that gets interpreted in as teaching us to devalue the darkness, devalue our bodies, devalue the flesh, to completely embrace spirit. Now there's another Christian tradition which teaches the exact opposite. And that is that the point of God coming to earth and taking on a body is that you can't divide them. They have to belong together. And, and so the, the idea was to to capture this moment where Christ comes down off the cross. Right? Christ embraces the world uh, despite all the suffering and all the pain and all the anguish that comes from being in the world. He comes down off the mountain into the darkness, into the, 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 the depths of the earth and with all its dirt and hatred. And, 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 and in the treatment, you talked about him coming down into a primitive dystopia. And there was these people, in the, and the lyric says, you know, you're trying to pull me back the, behind the fence with the cattle, building your lenses, digging your trenches. There's no color. Uh, people focused on the, these very strange and banal tasks. And so what's the significance of this being pulled back behind the fence with the cattle and, the, and those two lines? Yeah, well, I, I view the song as a sort of, it's, a, it's like a gospel. It's a message to humanity who gets so caught up in, in uh, either just seeking for the truth without the darkness, right, the, the light without the darkness, or get distracted and, and, and get caught up in, in meaningless conflicts. And, and it's, a, it's a message to all of us to awaken us out of our, our being lost in meaningless activities and, and learning to embrace what it is to be human. So what's wrong with what, the, what these people are doing down in the primitive dystopia? What, are they, what, are they, what do they represent? What does building your lenses mean? I think you remember, I remember you saying this is like different views, uh, different possible ways of looking at the world, right? Yeah, that's how I read the, uh, that's how I read the lyrics. So he, he gives you several beautiful paradigms of how to respond to all the confusion and, and the, the suffering of the world. And one is to build your lenses, right? To the advance of science. Get, build microscopes and telescopes and, and arrive at scientific theories and uh, the scientific truth about the world. But that's often a way of detaching yourself from human involvement and, and engagement with things. You, you look for the timeless, absolute realities and, and lose sight of what it is to be a human being engaged in life. And digging your trenches, right? you get caught up in, in wars, power, all these sorts of distractions of, of existence and division of people from each other and try and divide the world into good and bad and right. evil and 
and righteous.